Okay, so I'm going to show us how to um, create a mock-up of our t-shirt design on kind of like a model and it'll look fairly realistic. So let's search for mock-up world. It's this really kind of cool website with a lot of free templates that you can use that are great for creating mock-ups. And mock-ups are nice just because they really show what you're end product might look like. And you can actually experiment with the mock-up files to see which color of t-shirt you want to go with. So um, if we actually search for under here, fashion apparel, and we can keep searching down here. I'm going to X out of this because it starts to get pretty... Um, okay, keep going. I think it might be on page two. So like you can download any of these, you know, you just have to kind of go and see if it's free, go to view details. And then there's usually a download button. And sometimes when you go to download something, it's not quite right. Like it's like, Oh, sign up for this, or actually you have to pay. So some of them are kind of tricky like that, but some of them actually are truly um, downloadable for free. And the one that we're going to go with is actually this one here. So I actually found it on week two or page two. Um, under the fashion and apparel section. Um, so this one here, if you find this one, custom, customizable t-shirt mock-up. So if we click on this, um, it's a PSD file. So make sure whatever one you go with, if you don't go with this one, just make sure that you go with a PSD file because you can do this at home. You don't need to come into the lab to do this. As long as you have your AI file to work from, or actually a probably a transparent PNG file of your t-shirt design to work from. If you email that to yourself, you can actually do the mock-up at home, but you're going to need that transparent PNG, high resolution PNG of your, um, of your t-shirt design email to yourself or, you know, just Dropbox it or whatever, however you do that so that you can work from home. But if you have the PSD file, you can actually use photop.com. So let's just do this download it. It kind of ends up redirecting you um, to different websites a lot of the time and sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not okay. So this one is actually is.graphics that made this. We're actually going to um, download it for free. Um, so it might take a little bit for it to download but it'll go into my downloads folder. If I open this up you can see it's downloading. I've actually already used this and I actually am going to put this in the Brightspace area too because this is actually a really nice template and you might have some issues searching around but if you want to use a different template, um, say you want to use a sweatshirt or you just want to use um, a model that's actually wearing your shirt, then um, you can find one like that as well. So um, here's our t-shirt mock-up. So here's the PSD file. So if you're at home, you can use PhotoP. Um, I'm just going to double click on this. I have Photoshop, so I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. Um, so in Photoshop, I for some reason, my layers panel is not open. That's going to be the most important area when you come into a mock-up file. The best thing for you to do is kind of open everything up, honestly, in the layers panel. And just go through with the eyeballs and just see, you know, what's going on here, basically. Let me move my window here. Ah, dang it. I'll move it over here because this is, happens to be where the layers panel is. Okay, so really um, we can do the eyeballs on each one of these layers and just see what, what it is. So this is the shadow on the neck. This is the actual neck color. So we can change that here. Here's the sleeves. So underneath the sleeves, we have the left sleeve and the right sleeve. And then we have um, different shadow effects. Um, and then also the color of the sleeve, like rolled up. And then the same for the right side, reflection, shadow on the sleeve, and then the color of the cuff on the sleeve. And then here's um, a shadow or the reflection of the whole t-shirt. Here's the shadow over top of that. And then this is the actual graphic. So this is what we change, and it even says change this. Um, this is the liquify feature, which kind of makes it look like it's on a crumpled up t-shirt. It's a filter, I mean, it's called liquify, but they have it 
added to that. Here's the color of the main part of the t-shirt that we will change by clicking, double clicking here. Um, and then this is the background color. So um, with this particular template, you know, we just need to go through and change all of these whites and then change this file here. So this is easy enough to do. Um, so let's just start by changing the color of the t-shirt. So if I could double click here, um, let's say I want to make it like, um, maybe like a nice kind of muted blue color. So one quick way of grabbing this color is just this pound sign. This is actually the web color, but it's all in one chunk. So we can just do a command C on that, push OK. And then let's just go through and change the rest of the colors in the t-shirt. So command V, just place it back in here. Okay, so I'm double clicking on all of these areas where we can change the colors of different parts of the t-shirt. Double click here, command V. Okay, and so that's great. Um, now for the main event, which is really changing the graphic of the, of the shirt really. Um, I think I did miss somewhere else, but we'll keep going. I'm kind of wondering about this chunk here, but um, so let's go into Illustrator and let's say that this is my t-shirt design. Um, so I'm just going to delete out the background color that I had in there. Um, unless you want there to be an actual square or shape behind your object, um, you can probably just leave it totally open. I mean, you know, your canvas or your artboard without a background color, unless you want one there. Um, it's up to you, obviously, how your design works. But mine, let's just say mine is just on a, it's basically going to be the t-shirt color is going to be the background of my graphic. So let's just do a file, export, export as. Let's just do on the desktop, let's just make this a PNG file. I'm going to use my artboard, so... And then I just have one artboard, so range of one, export that. I'm going to make it 300 DPI because we're going to be printing these mockups. Um, transparent is good. Push OK. Um, I already have one named this, so I'm just replacing it. You, you're probably not going to get that prompt. So that's the file, that PNG file that you're going to need to email yourself if you want to do this from home. Of course, I think we're probably going to take time in class to do this, so... Um, Oops, okay, sorry, wrong place. So we're going back in here and we're gonna actually change this portion of our design. So if we double click here, this is kind of what we get. It's just one solid chunk with a white background. We can turn this off and actually just do a file, place embedded or place linked. It just depends on which one you want. But um, so here's my swan PNG file. So I, I brought that in. And then if I want to create a kind of solid background color of that blue, then I think let's just try saving it at this stage. So command S and then let's go back into our project. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Oops. Um, maybe this is a little low, obviously, on the design. So let's go back into this file and then let's just like move it up and then do a command S and just see if that helps us out. And that does, and maybe it's a little big on my shirt, so I can always make adjustments. So maybe like Command T and um, in Photoshop is a transform. Um, and then just, let's just size it down within this tab basically. Um, and I believe this is called a smart object in Photoshop. It's basically like you can edit. It's, a, it's basically, if you bring a smart object in as a layer, you can double click on that icon in the layers panel and then it'll open up in a new tab and you can edit it there, there and then save it. And then it'll automatically update in your actual PSD Photoshop document. Um, so that's kind of what's going on right now. And that is a little bit more of like what I was looking for. I think there's somewhere that I'm missing that is this part of the shirt. And I'm not quite sure where that would be, but I can kind of try to find it. You know, somewhere along the way, I might have even accidentally like deleted it or something. There's so many different layers in this. Um, that it definitely could be. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. 
Maybe I can just delete that. Probably not the best idea, but no. I don't know. Every template's going to be a little bit different. Oh, here it is. Command V. So I just, I kind of just forgot to add in that one little chunk of um, the color here that was under the inner section of the t-shirt. So there's just kind of a lot of layers in here, but basically opening them all up and kind of using the eyeball and exploring can help you to understand the template a little bit more. And that's basically how you create a mock-up. You can always use a different file if you want. Um, you can use um, one with an actual model in it if you want as well. This one doesn't have that, but it's actually a really nice, realistic looking t-shirt. Um, so, and this may not be the best color for this because that green doesn't really pop out on top of it. So that's something to consider too when you're choosing your actual t-shirt color is like what's going to kind of enhance the artwork that you made in Illustrator. So basically I'm just going to want to do a file X, let's maybe just a save as, and this is the file that I want the JPEG save. Um, This is a good way um, to save it, t-shirt mockup.jpg. Save that out as a high resolution JPEG. And this is the file that I'm going to want for a grade. And you might want to throw this into, um, well, it's not a big deal if it's not in CMYK color. And then do, for your own purposes, you can do a file save as t-shirt um, mockup, and you can save that PSD file in your documents folder under Illustration 2, um, probably underneath another folder labeled t-shirt design, and then you can save this PSD in there, and this will be the working file with all of the different layers in it um, for you to change later on if you want to, just for your own files and your own reference.